All right, what up, everybody? It's another episode of Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. Uh, we had an extended uh, break, but we're back. And tonight's episode is Breakaway Dunks. What's up, good people? Thanks for tuning in. Jay, Breakaway Dunks. First, let's define it. All right. So how does it happen? So you're, you're coming down the court. You go to pass it to the wing, and dude steals the ball. It's going down court, no defender, easy layup, but you jam that shit home. So essentially, a breakaway dunk is a situation where you end up, there's no defense. There's no defense. It's a all golden the, opportunity. All the advantage is yours. That's exactly the right. It's a golden opportunity, and instead of... Just scoring, you score emphatically. That's exactly right. All right, so we're going to use that analogy in relationships. But Jay, let's start with some, with, with some politics, on a macro yet important level. Yesterday was election day. That's right. Um, this would be a good I don't give a fuck segment for you, but I'm just going to lead with lead with it. And I have issue with people who don't vote, and it's. It's a horrible feeling to feel powerless. It's a horrible feeling to feel voiceless. But it's the one thing we all have. It's a it's an imperfect system. Elections get rigged. I mean, you name it. But to not exercise the one thing you can exercise that matters, I think it's foolish. And there are literally people in their grave that are there just so you can have your right Agreed. to vote. So I say, even if you have a bunch of candidates you do not like, even if you're not politically inclined, where you even follow politics or know what's going on in the climate, at minimum, choose the lesser of the evils. Just just go vote, because it's really it's the only bullet you have in your chamber. All right, man. So I'm licking my chops while you're talking, and and here's my breakaway dunk. When you think about all of the service men and women throughout the history of this country, every war that's ever been fought, that has given their life, that has given their honor, that has made it their duty to protect our country for our individual freedoms what you just said if you think about it from the standpoint of your power to vote was their sacrifice that's the first thing but now I'm in a 360 tomahawk this motherfucker you see one of the best parts about our ability to vote is this word called abstain and what that means is that you can show up to the voting booth, you can take the voting card, the, the ballot, and there can be certain things that you check off because whether you're Democrat, Republican, conservative, it doesn't matter, independent, you can make a choice about certain people because you don't know either side and you just decide, hey, this is the party that I like, I'm going to pick a candidate for this. And if there's somebody that you don't like, or there's a particular you know, um, office that you don't like any of the candidates, you can abstain. That's okay. But you have to show up and then say, I chose not to vote for either candidate. But to not show up and vote at all? Think about it from the standpoint of our last presidential election in which you had the lowest voter turnout in modern history. It does not matter who won. What matters is all the people who chose not to vote, they don't have a right to say anything about either candidate, whoever won. Yeah, you lost. actually just said exactly what my next comment was going to be. So now, if you don't vote, now you can't complain. No. And I can't even 
entertain your concerns. That's exactly Because you right. didn't entertain your concerns. And the thing about voting, it's imperative on every level. Like, um, the your roads and your schools and street lights are directly affected by your local government, like your city councilman. You know, That's so right. it's always important. And when you see a landslide, Let's say, just using round numbers, candidate A wins an election by 100,000 votes. You know, the, the lame thinks, well, my one vote wouldn't matter. But you have to understand, if 400,000 people thought like you, that sways the election completely in the other direction. So I will say, don't spin in the face of those who fought for us to have that ability. And... And I'm not specifying this to women where it was illegal for them to vote and for minorities where it was illegal for them to vote, for us to vote, because there are plenty of white Americans that don't vote. Right. And I'm keeping it broad because whether you want to talk about women's rights or civil rights, even if you just talk about the fact that right now as we speak, like you can walk around doing what you do because of national security and the freedoms we have here. That's correct. So whoever you are, whatever the situation, whatever your background, and I guess you could say especially if at one point a few decades ago you weren't even allowed to vote. But really, it applies to everybody. Go vote. And if you don't vote, shut up. All right. So on that note, I think we should take a break and we're going to come back with our next segment this is fun and truth jay before we get into the fun topic of the day love and sex breakaway dunks i gotta say one thing bring it about sports so there's been a lot of great athletes right like you know in or in every type of sport and then there's some living legends today like tom brady for one, mm -hmm. two decades worth of greatness In basketball, some of the greatest players we've known were cooked, washed, finished by like their 13th season. LeBron James, I have to just point out, this guy is currently in his 17th season. Mm -hmm. 17th season. Mm -hmm. He's leading the league in assists. Yeah, He's not even a point guard. Yeah. So I just, you know... Sometimes, and see, here's the thing: whether you like him or not is irrelevant. Because there are, I'm not a Tom Brady fan. Yeah. But you got to sometimes you have to respect somebody's yeah. game. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that don't like LeBron James. There's a lot of LeBron James truthers. Whatever side of the coin you're on, we're talking about a guy that never cheats the game, and in year 17, with an obscene amount of mileage on his body, he's leading the league in assists. It's very difficult to do. Kudos to him. Yeah. Any comments before we go in? You know, I, I do have a comment and and you know, I'm I'm a LeBron fan. But what's funny about it and I mean we've you know discussed this in previous episodes is the fact that what LeBron has done for the game and you know again People try to compare him to Jordan. They try to compare him to Kobe. They make all these comparisons. And, and in general, everybody's looking for the greatest of all time in you know these sports. And what LeBron has done for the game, both on and off the court, is something that we won't appreciate until he's gone. And that in and of itself is something where Magic Johnson said it at the end of Michael's career and we don't know when the end of LeBron's career is going to be but if you are watching right now press record because at this stage and, and that's the same thing for Tom Brady at this stage in both their careers if you are not recording these moments, these are the most priceless because this is after they've been through all the wars. This is after all the successes. You know, 
LeBron went to nine straight NBA finals. And like three straight Olympics. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's logged more minutes than any other player it's, in modern history in, in a short period of time. And I think he already has 25,000 points. It's something and, obscene. It's, you know, it's, it's, let's just appreciate and, and I, the greatness. And I say this, uh, really, any walk of life, you know, if you come across someone who's great at what they do, mm -hmm. even if you don't have an understanding of it, you have to understand greatness. Right. right? You don't, you don't, you may not paint, but you can know a great painting when you see it. Yes. Maybe. Or, you know, you don't do construction. Right. Right. But if you come across a beautifully constructed structure. Yes. Right. So I'm just saying, like, it's just appreciate it because... These things, these people don't come around all the time. That's exactly right. You know? All right, Jay, let's go in. All right. So, you know, obviously tonight's episode is breakaway dunks. You're almost handed the rock to go down the court undefended. So let's, let's, let's look at a basic scenario here. Let's do it. You're dating a girl, first, second date, right? And um, she's gauging you. You're, you're getting into conversation. What do you like? What do you like? You know, and let's say that you're out at dinner. What would be an easy dunk to score a victory that she's going to be like, you're in? From that perspective? Yeah. I mean, an aggressive one comes to mind. Like, for example, let's mm -hmm. say something comes up on Instagram on one of your phones. Right. And you're still feeling her out. Okay. And she comments on the thing. Let's, let's say something very suggestive, like about anal sex. Okay. Now, you're sitting there with her. You haven't been intimate with her yet. Right. And let's say she lets her guard down. And in that moment, she admits that she's into that. Okay. It's a breakaway dunk. Because now, something that you're thinking you're not going to find out for two or three dates. Right. She lets slip up front. Right. So now you might feel, not that you're going to go have anal sex with her that night. Right. But you feel like you're one up because you're right. like, well, I know something about her now. Right. So it's one less layer so, for you to peel. So what is the best way to handle that situation that makes her feel even more comfortable with the fact that she shared it? With what you don't do is say, oh, word, something stupid like, oh, you're really into that? Like just sound like a... Like a like a prick, right? Right, right. What you do is immediately don't act too excited, like right. an eager fool, but you immediately make her feel like it's no big deal. Like okay. that's cool. You know, right. like you're into that. Like I wouldn't question her because right. you're not there to interrogate anybody. Right. And don't make her feel inadequate. Could you even let her feel like maybe she could teach you something? That's an angle. That's you know, an angle. Let educate you on on something that maybe she has more experience in with you, well, whether she does or not. Who have, knows? But. You have two ears and one mouth. You can do double the amount of listening as you do speaking. You could say to her, "Well, what is it you like about that? Like, tell me." Right. You know? Yeah. Because now had a lot of experience. Now, but while you ask her that, don't ask her about her past. Right. No one wants to be interrogated. Let her just volunteer what she wants to volunteer, and then. If she's forthcoming, great. If she's right. not, leave it alone. Yeah, let it go. And then now, what has happened is you did not shoot the messenger. Right. So now she knows she can say whatever to you. You're not going to overreact, and you're not going to press her. Right. But it's a breakaway dunk. Right. Let me give you an example. So that was one scenario. Yeah. Here's another example of a breakaway dunk. You, you know, uh, hold on to that scenario for one second. I want to just say what, what makes that really a breakaway dunk, I think that, you know, we're, we're, um, we're establishing... For our audience that, you know, it's really seizing the opportunity and making the most with it is that in that particular case, she's giving you a, a piece of information that 
maybe she's trying to make you uncomfortable. And what you do with it is you receive it and you welcome it. And not only do you welcome it, but you say, you know, something to the uh, the effect of, you know, um, that shows me that you have a lot of courage. Um, it's unexpected and it's also very, very um, supportive. That's a breakaway dunk. There you go. Another scenario. The first time you get around her family or when I say family, her people, anybody that's close to her. Mm -hmm. So now, again, it's the beginning. Yeah. Cousin Pam says something to, to you like, I've heard so much about you. It's so good she met such a nice guy, you know, especially after what happened with the last guy. Mm -hmm. Or something like, um, you know, the last guy really did her dirty. Again, you don't know any of this, any of this about her. Right, right. So now, it's a breakaway dunk. Anytime yeah. you can get additional information that gives you insight as to who you're dealing with. Right. So now, you know, you know, she might be comparing you to this other guy. Or matter, even in that same vein, you might find out she was engaged. Right. You know, you, you I'm, glad she, I'm, glad, I'm glad she met a nice guy because yeah. I can't believe the last guy broke her heart and they never yeah. got married. Yep. Or, I mean, people say all kinds, like... And, and if so what? And what's the response for the? You know, so now you got the ball. You're going down the court again. Undefended. You cannot overreact. Okay. Your eyes get too big, or you show shock. Yeah. Don't fumble the rock. Or if you show disgust. Yeah. Or if you show happiness, anything will tip that person off to stop speaking so much. Right. You might find out. You know, I'm glad you're here to comfort her. It really bothered her when she lost the baby. Right. Mm -hmm. You didn't know anything about that. So right. there are times where you get some additional information. And I'm, by no means am I suggesting you take it and make it advantageous where you like take advantage of the person. Right. right. I'm saying the more you know about anybody. Right. The better it is for you. You know, it, what's interesting about it is that you're you're setting me up to, you know, make the dunk. So I'll tell you how I would respond in this particular case is I would let the person know who just gave me that information that I really appreciate how much confidence they have in me to be willing to share that. It makes me feel, you know... Can, like, we, can we do this breakaway dunk, like a two-man fast break? Yeah. Pass it yeah, back absolutely. to me real quick. Yeah, off the backboard. Maybe. I would say this, like, well, you know, I heard a lot about you too. And it's nice to know she has such a supportive family. Yeah. Because all you're doing by saying that, first of all, it's true. But secondly, it's better than calling the person a blabbermouth. Right. And thirdly, that person's going to spill even more <laughs> information That's right. to you. That's now, right. Now, now they're going to feel connected to you yeah. and be willing to give you everything. All right. Let's take a break. Come right back. And let's, let's explore these breakaway dunks in some really uh, stressful situations. All right, we're back. This is Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. So, Pat. So here's get, the thing. Go ahead. You get a steal. Yeah. Right? You're going down to court. Mm -hmm. You get excited. You see that big ring. Not only that. Nobody in front nobody's of Nobody's in front of you. The crowd is. Yo, they're lit. So here you are. Everybody's frothing at the and mouth. And you're like, man, what? What kind of dunk am I going to... Not even am I going to dunk it. It's what kind of dunk am That's I right. going to do. You get down there and you jump. You double pump. Yeah. Two-hand reverse windmill. And you miss the damn dunk. <laughs> so now everybody's like, go, go, go. Oh. So now you, you're, you're a sucker, right? Yeah. You miss that shit. So here we go. How about this? So let's say you're in a situation mm -hmm. where the girl you're dating, yeah, she, now you guys have slept together, she's feeling close to you, and she says, you know, remember my cousin Pam? You know, she, 
Can you believe her? Can you believe her, her and her man had a threesome and now they're having problems? No, I can't imagine that. And now, <laughs> and now this schmuck is like, well, well, I don't think it's right for you to bring a third person into the bedroom. Or some stupid shit. Like, right, right, right. Some judgmental shit. Because I'm not saying that has to be your thing. What I'm saying is, you can't, who are you to judge? Right. right? So the, per, the fact that you you brought right and wrong into the situation. Right. So the, the steal or the opportunity to dunk the ball is the fact that she's even talking to you about her cousin's business. That's right. Right. Right there you won. Yeah. Now, you can finesse that. To discuss, have, discuss having a threesome if that's what you're interested in. Right. But Or you can not be into it, but it is not an opportunity yeah. for you to become Judge fucking Judy. Yeah. No, the, no the, the best thing to do is to ask a question like, well, what happened? You know, Something find like, out yeah, more information. And not, not, not what happened in the threesome. No, but just what, what happened. happened. Hey, so I, I like Pam. Why didn't it work out? Yeah. You know, is she okay? Yeah. Because now you're showing concern about her family. Right, right, right. But, Jay, I want you to play the role. Put on the hat of the jerk. Right. And tell me what a prick would say in that situation. Well, I, I, there's so many stupid things that somebody could say. You know, and you said it in terms of I don't think it's right. But if you wanted to go really dumb, you would be, you know, like, oh, well, um, you know, she's a fool for... for you know, letting him bring another woman into the bedroom anyway. You, you know, so now you again, anything that casts judgment, number one, puts you in that. Or, um, you know, he could say something even dumber where he's just like, you know, well, you know, Pam ain't the smartest, you know, person to begin with, you know, and he was whack, you know, anyway. It, you know, it, it always comes down to the the person who is criticizing oftentimes is projecting something about the other person that may not even be true. So... And breakaway dunks is really, you know, it's not always sexual. For example... Right. You meet somebody, and we talk, we talk a lot on this show about representatives, right? Yeah. You meet somebody, so their apartment is nice. Yeah. Their car is nice. Their clothing is nice. Right. All this stuff is material. Right. Right. Um, and and then, but you don't really know their financial situation. Right. Right. Um, you. They give the and then there's little signs like the person that always talks about money. Right. Chances are they have none. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. But let's say, you know, this person is representing themselves falsely, yeah. financially. You know, um, there might be little signs. Well, okay, let me let me investigate that with you. And, I mean, a, a perfect example of that is that you are on your second date. And you had a great first date. You decide that you want to step your game up and take her to a really nice restaurant just to show her that she's worth it, right? And you want to impress her even more because your goal is to get into the bedroom, number one, but number two is the fact that it's ego-driven, right? So you go to pay the bill and your card gets declined. You know, it's it, that, it could be as simple as that because now... But let me tell you, though. Yeah. Hold on. In uh -huh. that situation, there's two ways to handle it. Right. You can be embarrassed. Well, you know, it's embarrassing regardless. Right. But things happen. Right. So while it's embarrassing, you don't have to hang your head. Mm hmm You know, you figure out a way to pay it if you have another card or maybe she can pay it and you go and... Make sure you make her whole, like right. reimburse her. Right. But that could also tell you a lot about the other person. Like this, so the first, the one person might just squirm, like, "Oh my God, I'm so embarrassed." My, right. my, 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 but you could also find out her reaction, like to this. Like, and I'm not saying either reaction is wrong because 
if, if she got turned off and doesn't want to see you again, she's not wrong for that. At the same token, she might be ride or die. Well, listen, she, she might re, she might react like you know what I've been there before. Right, here's my card. I got this one. You you don't know until you're in that situation. Number one, but number two is that how you handle it is the difference between whether or not you 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 know dunk the rock or it goes exactly as you said off the rim. I mean, you want to make a joke about it? You could look it dead in the eye and be like, listen. I might be washing dishes all night, but for time with you, it's worth it. Ah, <laughs> nicely done. Listen to this though. Let's let's reverse the breakaway dunk though. Man and the woman are out eating. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ex girlfriend comes up to the guy, mm-hmm. and she is bad. Like she looks Tight. good. This helps your stock in the situation, right? Okay. If you handle it right, talk about it. So, your ex walks up to you. She's so happy to see you. She doesn't know who this girl is. She's just happy to see you. Now, you could get nervous, right? It's completely natural. You get nervous. Uh Uh-oh. However, you want to be a man? You want to impress the girl you're with? You immediately go to your ex and say, Hey, it's so great to see you. I'd love you to meet Eleanor. Yo, if your ex's name is Eleanor, she's 87 years old. Her name may as well be Gertrude. But anyway, go ahead. What's wrong with Gertrude, man? <laughs> Nothing if she has a trust fund. But I'm just saying. So, so anyway, you introduce her. And now they connect... Your ex might be like, oh, you know, you're so lucky to, you know, have him. You know, he's a really great guy. Listen, it was so great to see you. You don't know what he's going to say, but you know one thing is that the ex is not going to shit on you in that situation. And the reason why she's not going to shit on you is, number one, she's looking good. And she's got no reason to shit on you. But number two is that in the back of her mind, if she came up to you... There's still a potential that she wants to get with you again. Women are competitive by nature. Exactly. So I'm going to tell you the difference in how the breakaway dunks work in both directions. The, your ex mm-hmm. is thinking, was this chick have that I don't have? Right. Off the top. Now, if you're sitting there with the girl and her ex walks up, you're like, this punk. Like, it doesn't matter. Right. No man respects another man. Like, right. like right. if he's not your boy, like, what else? This, this dude, mm-hmm. this clown, right? And that's just the way it is. That's the way men are. Right. Like, right, right, you right. know, like we're not looking at him competitively because immediately he can't fuck with you. Like right. in your mind, she's moved on, and and she's moved up. Exactly. But for women, it's different. Right. When because if a guy walks up to the table. At least speaking for myself, I can't tell if he looks good, doesn't look good, is dressed nice. I don't give a fuck. Right. But women, they're checking out the chick's shoes, her bag, her hair, her right. body. Mm-hmm. You know, and I just think it's a different situation. But either way, it's a breakaway dunk. Agreed. Because so let's say this dude comes up to the table, and the one thing you can't do, you can't get an attitude. Right. Now you don't have, you don't you don't got to get up and give him a bro hug or no shit like that. Don't. Yeah, Don't look no, stupid. It's just like, what up? What up, yeah. man? What's good? You know? Exactly. And then now you have to watch how she moves. Right. She can, you know, greet him. Mm-hmm. And she needs to keep that shit moving. Right. If she talks too long. Yeah. Too much chatter. Again, speaking for myself. Yeah. This is dead. Yeah. This is dead. We're not. I mean, I might still try to sleep with her. Right. But it's not progressing anything beyond that. Because you already right. showed me disrespect. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I, I see what you're saying. You, you're saying that her her value overall depreciates based on the amount of time she gives dude who's Hands down. already history. Hands down. Yeah, yeah. Like because why are we revisiting? History? Because so look, it's all how you interpret body language. Yeah. Again, breakaway dunks could just be accumulating information. Mm-hmm. So let's say in the beginning you're thinking. This girl could be the girl. Like what I what I what I know about her so far, we might commit. Like I might 
rock out with her. Right. And I'm not just trying to have a good time with her. I'm trying to maybe be with her. Right. So you're still at that point where is she going to be a finale girl or a girl girl? Right. right? right. So you're sitting there and as you're deciding that, you find that she's a little bit too chummy with these dudes. So now that's that's tipping the scale in one direction or the other. Right. And it's it's important because if you like how she carries herself, it'll tip the scale in the direction of a breakaway dunk toward the potential future. Right. If right. you don't like how she behaves, it'll tip your scale in, well, she's just for now. Right. Either way, it's a breakaway dunk. Right. So when, you know, just to define a little bit more for our audience, what we're really talking about is the fact that the other person is opening a door for you, whether they realize it or not, and they're often doing it in in a case in which they're fumbling some information to you or fumbling a situation, and you have the opportunity to go through that door in style, because there's there's no defender. So you you don't have to get too excited, you don't have to overdo it, you know, you can take your time, you can, you know, be dramatic if you want to, but, you know, you got to seize that opportunity. Don't miss the breakaway dunk. So there's two angles to this, though. Yeah. We've been speaking about it from the perspective of there's a slip up or an opportunity that you take advantage of to go do a breakaway dunk. That's right. But as you know from playing ball, yeah, a lot of breakaway dunks are from steals. That's right. So can you think of an example where in a relationship someone steals the ball like aggressively to create their own breakaway dunk? It's not a mistake or a slip up on the other party's part. Right. It's where you maybe set the person up to see their reaction. Yeah. In hopes of a breakaway dunk. For example, instead of a girlfriend coming up to you uh, per chance at a restaurant where you guys are hanging out or a bar, maybe, I'm just making this up on the fly, but maybe you're like, well, I want to see her reaction if I go dance with this girl. Yeah. You know, so there are situations where breakaway dunks are like kind of conjured up. Yeah. Conjured up or, you know, exactly what you're saying is a setup on purpose where you're identifying that you want to create a reaction, but you already know in advance based on that reaction what you're going to do and how you're going to handle it. Now, what's interesting about that is that I think it's harder to do when you're just getting to know somebody and get the result that you want. I may be wrong there. You know, but but my opinion is that that works in a relationship that already has some legs to it. So if if I may lead on this, using your example that let's say you go on vacation together and things are kind of mundane. You guys are in a rut. You're trying to figure out what can I do to add a little excitement so you tell her you're going down to the pool and you know you're gonna um, take care of the chairs or whatever and when she comes down you're flirting with the waitress or you're talking to two other girls or you're in the pool with a gorgeous woman and you guys are having a very close conversation any number of things that could agitate her. And then when you come over to her, you could be, you know, dripping wet coming out of the pool or you could be holding a drink and you didn't get her one. So it's something where your goal is to put her in a really bad mood. And once you've done that, you play it cool. Until she comes at you, which isn't going to be until later that night when you're going out to the party or, you know, um, you know, something's going on and she's just like had it with you. And now she's going to blow up in your face and you're going to be like, hmm. So what did you think I was doing? 
And you know, that same scenario might arouse her. Like I've been told by women that they don't like when they see a... It's one thing for a man to be respectful and not all over another woman. It's another thing if a guy acts as if he can't speak to women. Right. You know, so she might come down and see you interact with other women and like how you move. Yeah. But let's talk, let's go back to those missed dunks. Okay. Here's a scenario. You're out. It's a crowded place. There's a guy that's a little bit too demonstrative. Mm-hmm. Dancing too aggressively or what have you. He bumps into the your date. Knocks her drink over. Mm-hmm. Um, you're like, so she's looking at you to defend her. Right. And you put your head down and walk away. Now, let me tell you oh, something. You, just, you let the ball go out of bounds. That you, was an opportunity even... for you to be a man. Right. And you don't have to get into a bar fight. You simply need to check this dude. Like, my man, you... You knocked her drink over. Right. At minimum, he needs to be like, I'm sorry, or my bad. He needs he has to at least acknowledge it yeah. and apologize because you checked him. Right. He doesn't necessarily have to buy her another one, but there has to be some acknowledgement. Yeah. If that's the moment of truth. If at that moment you're yellow, you're coward, and you don't step up, you could forget it. But Call her an Uber. It's over. It's right. Oh, she'll even call if, her own Uber. And she will never, even if somehow, some way, you guys rock out, maybe she has nothing better to do, nobody better to see. Maybe she'll take your money, go out with you. She will never, ever, 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 ever respect you. Like, it's over. Like, so yeah. even if there's something else that comes from that, respect will not be one of them. Right, right. No, I, I agree with you on that. Um Let's take a break. We're going to come back. I'm going to throw some uh, mischief into here. Let's do it. All right, we're back. This is Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. Uh, We're talking about breakaway dunks, which are opportunities to walk through an open door that your partner has uh, basically opened for you either by accident or by um, just presenting an opportunity, and you have all the control to score easy points. So I'm going to give you one from a standpoint. You know, I said that, you know, I was going to add some mischief to this. But first, you know, we haven't talked about, like, people in long-term relationships and breakaway dunks. You've been in the, you know, relationship for a while, and you guys are settled in and the beauty of breakaway dunks when you're in a long-term relationship is that it could be something really really simple and small like the fact that your toothbrushes have been used for quite a while and it's time to replace them you know, I'm I'm obviously, you know, taking a very, very small hygiene issue. But believe it or not, just taking the responsibility to do something unexpected and do something a little bit surprising, like, you know, buy, you know, a sonic toothbrush or an automated toothbrush or something so that when she comes home, You've upgraded something that, you know, needed to be replaced. So you did something completely different. That's a breakaway dunk, believe it or not. Um, Another thing is that it could be in terms of house roles. You know, one of you is used to, you know, taking out the garbage and the other person is used to washing the dishes. And... You know, you come home, your girl, you can see she's stressed out. She just can't handle anything. And you say, baby, I got it. Don't worry about it. And you go call a maid service so that you can give her a day, take her out. And the maids, that's a breakaway dunk. Yeah. So anything considerate or that addresses a need or a want without you having been told directly, 
can be a breakaway dunk. But let's flip it. Sometimes arguing is good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, keep somebody on edge. Right. You don't want to be too available, too agreeable, too anything. You know, and sometimes it's, uh, I was thinking we would go do this and that. You're like, no, no, we're not. Why not? I don't want to. What's wrong? Nothing. We're going to stay here and do this. But I don't want to do this. Yes, you do. And and it's like, you, it's like a shock. It's like, um, you know how when you work out in the gym, you can't do the same workout every day? Right. Because there's no shock to your system. After a while, your, you your body plateaus, right? Yeah. Same thing with, with relationships. Like if you, the worst thing you could do is be on a schedule where you're sleeping together every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Right. You know? And everything becomes monotonous. Mix it up. You right. Know? And, you know, she's bending down to pick something over, and suddenly you're having sex. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, you know, or oh, the things you said, the gestures you mentioned, anything that kind of breaks the norm. These are breakaway dunks because, you know, in basketball, when you get a breakaway dunk, it changes the... Momentum. Momentum of the game. Thank you. I was trying to find the word. So... Same thing can happen in a relationship. You mentioned a, a trip. Trips in the beginning of a relationship accelerate the relationship. That's correct. Trips later in a relationship, they're like a reset button on the relationship. Right. Right? Both are breakaway dunks. In the first, you can come back from that a little three-day weekend. You can come back from that closer than ever mm-hmm. on another level. You can come back from that thinking, I'm glad we went away. This shit is not going to work. It's horrible. Right. You can be in a relationship so long where you're like, man, this is, this is not working out because you kind of lost your way. Right. You can go away from responsibility and the daily grind and rediscover, like, you know, whatever it is was working for you guys in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And all you needed was some peace and quiet right. to, like, enjoy that. These are all breakaway dunks. Anything that shifts momentum... And but again, it can go either way. Don't every dunk isn't a three sixty. Right. People miss those shots. Often. Well, because because again, it's an undefended layup, and you just get excited, and you do more than you need to do based on the crowd. You know, the expectations of the crowd that isn't really there anyway. But number two, your own mind, and. Um, you know, using that example that you just said about vacations, I mean, here's a perfect, you know, um, miss. You go on a cruise and you wind up eating way more than you should have and getting sick. And now you're stuck in your cabin and she's out partying and dancing every night, having a good time, meeting other people while you're seasick in your cabin on this cruise because you ate too much and drank too much or whatever, and also you've never been on a boat before. So if you think that, you know, you can do something and it's an automatic victory, you really have to think things through and make sure that, you know, you're really in control of yourself. You know, you don't have to necessarily be in control of the situation, but the beauty of a break, breakaway day, a dunk, excuse me, the beauty of a breakaway dunk is that as long as you're in control of yourself, it's nearly impossible to lose unless you completely. You know what though? You're right, but you got to think it out too. I think some people just have no game. Right. Like guys and girls, you know, like. Um, a guy might have bought into the thinking that you got to spend a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And that might be nonsense because the depending on your target audience, right, the person you're dealing with may not give a damn about some material item that you want to buy them. Right. Right. And you have to identify what will work for them. A, a woman might think Rightfully so in most cases, there's something sexual you have to do. 
Right. right. My point is, there's a lot of ways to successfully complete that breakaway dunk. Right. You know, it is, it is, and, and as a matter of fact, you're probably better off in some cases doing something they least expect. Right. You know, so just if you nail it, it's priceless. If you mess it up, though, bro. Yo, you, you really missed an opportunity. So, all right, before we get to the last segment here, because I, I think we've had a, you know, really, really good, you know, um, investigation of, of this. When you think of mindset, you know, obviously we want our listeners to walk away with something here. When you think of mindset of where you need to be from the perspective of the door is open, I can walk through, I can strut through, I can be a drama queen, I can do anything I want because this is a breakaway dunk. What really matters to make sure that you get this right? The number one thing I think in every situation is comfort level. Okay. Simply put, you know, like colloquialism, like there's no future in front end, right? So just in general, the more comfortable you are, right, the better things are going to be. Meaning, the more you can be yourself, and then the better you get to know the other person, right, right. So now, there's less risk. There's a higher likelihood of you not blowing that dunk. Right. Now, right. in the beginning, it's different, but you gotta be willing to take chances. Right. You know, so I think, you know, it depends what you want in the relationship too, because there are people in the relationships, they just don't care. And if you don't care, really, the outcome doesn't matter. You know, so I'm glad you brought this point up because I think the other thing behind this is in terms of how people value the the situation or the opportunity. So a lot of people, part of why they miss breakaway dunks is because they're saying, if I do this, I'm going to be able to get a piece of ass. Or if I do this, I'm going to get a Gucci bag. If I do this, he's going to take me on a vacation. If I do this, you know, she's going to blow me. So... The, the whole thing about a breakaway dunk, in my perspective, is that what really matters is the fact that you realize that this is an opportunity to score points, but it's not like you're getting 50 points for a dunk. You're getting the same amount of points as if you did anything else. It's just a matter of now, you had an, a golden opportunity to score points. So check this out, though. In the right. course of a game, to your point... If you have a breakaway dunk, yep. but you turn the ball over eight times, you're not up on points. Like you're not you're, up on points, so, exactly. So really, if you, think of, if you look at a relationship like a full game, right. you got that breakaway dunk in the first quarter, but now it's the end of the game, and you can't make a basket. Right. So my point is you can have leverage in a relationship, right. and you can forego that leverage because you keep fucking up. Right. Like you keep messing up. Or, exactly. And so... At the end of the day, seize the opportunity, create the opportunity, don't blow the opportunity, pun intended. And don't force the opportunity. And don't force the opportunity. Word. All right, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. This is Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. Uh, Tonight's episode is Breakaway Dunks. And Pat, I think that our audience needs to understand that the goal of this particular episode is trying to help them make sure that they stay within themselves. And on that note, I'm going to tell you my I don't give a fuck tonight, Pat. I don't give a fuck about what your friends think of me. And here's what I mean. Your friends could think I'm the worst thing in the world or I'm the greatest thing in the world. I could be a superhero or a supervillain or I could be nobody at all. 
But the truth is, is that that's what your friends think of me. And they don't know me. And if they're telling you based on their observations of what they see of me, or what you tell them of me, or what they don't see of me, or what you don't tell them of me, the reality is, is the value of their opinions in my life is absolutely zero. You wanna know why? Because at the end of the day, who I am and who I'm going to be only matters to two people, you and me, because the value of our interaction is the only value that I'm interested in making stronger. So I don't give a fuck about what your friends think of me. Yeah, and it's funny because my PSA is about friends also. From the perspective of, I advise all of our listeners, our entire audience, to start filtering. Not all your friends are your friends. You know, we all we, we define friends differently. Some people define friends based on what people can do for them. I think that's bullshit personally. Um, like my only prerequisite for friendship is, are you cool? <laughs> You're cool, I'm cool, let's, let's be cool and you treat me with respect and let's have some fun, what have you. But some people approach it all like, what can I get from the person? Like, you know, um, they work in this industry. I work in this one. We're friends. No, you're not. You're associates. Okay? Mm -hmm. Stop it. So you need to filter and or or categorize. You don't have to filter where you're getting rid of people, but manage your expectations, right? So like, you know, this person might only be in your life because of what you can do for them. Right. And vice versa. This other person, whether you're up, whether you're down, they got your back. Mm -hmm. That's your friend. And if you look around, it's a small list. I don't care how many people you rock with, hang with, chill with. I guarantee you, if you really think about who would still be standing next to you, if you lost it all, it's a short, short mm -hmm. list. So you can filter and get rid of people. Or you can just categorize and manage expectations. But one thing's for sure, know who your friends are. Word up. All right, this has been Fun and Truth in Black and White with Pat and Jay. Jay, we got to let them know, let the audience know. Word. Next show, we're going to be announcing our next two live show dates. Right. All right, so stay tuned for that. Come out, support us in yeah, person. We're, let's put it this way. We're going to finish uh, 2019 strong. We're coming up on the holiday season. Um, we know you guys are going to be out there getting fat and happy and, you know, having a the good time. The funny thing about the live shows, they are such different experiences yes. <laughs> than doing it in the office. That's and exactly each right. crowd is completely different. That's right. So come out, make your mark. Yeah. Show us some support and love. Uh, we love you back. And uh, we're going to go into 2020 strong, man. Let's do it. Peace and All love, right. guys. Good night. Good night.